Okay, now let's go back to Revelation 20. And then if you still don't believe it after that, then a simple answer is this. So some people who hate dispensationalism, it's because they lose followers and subscribers and eventually they get kicked out of YouTube and they have to start from scratch all over again. These people, they hate dispensationalism. So what they'll argue about this first resurrection is, so the first resurrection has to be only tribulation saints. Hence, there cannot be a pre-trib rapture because the first rapture has to start with tribulation saints. That's what people will do when they hate dispensationalism. So they think that the rapture starts here, it doesn't start here. But we've shown you for 1 Corinthians 15, yeah, it's first, but it consists of three stages over here. But even if we go by their argument, a simple answer is this. A simple answer is, obviously, there were many resurrections before this, even if there is no church rapture. Excluding the church rapture, you can't neglect Jesus Christ raised himself from the dead, all the bodies Jesus himself had raised from the dead. The Old Testament saints at Matthew 27, they raised from the dead, unless they deny that too. Elijah re resurrected somebody from the dead, and uh, a soldier touching Elisha's body resurrected from the dead. I mean, Lazarus raised himself from the dead, so there were too many resurrections. So then what do you, th so what is the author saying first resurrection? It's very apparent. He's in what timeline here? Revelation 20. The context is Revelation 20 here. So when we're in this end times here, see in the end times here, the first resurrection will be these tribulation people. And then the second resurrection afterward will be the lost people. It's that simple. He's not saying from all time of biblical history this is a first resurrection. No, he's saying in this case over here, as there's this millennium starting, we have a first resurrection and a second resurrection. It's that simple. It's like me saying the first guy to walk inside this room will be able to have dibs on this marker and then the second guy will just not be so lucky, okay? So then what does that mean? Does that mean that when the first person walks inside this room that he's the first person ever throughout all time and history who ever walked inside the room? No, in the context over here, the context of this ti current timeline and situation, you're the first one. See, it's that simple. All right, let's go back over here. Now, notice again at verse 6, the first resurrection, right? On such the second death has no power. Now we repeated verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 about a thousand years is a literal 1,000 years, right? So this case over here, we believe that this is literal. This first resurrection has to be literal. However, there's a group called amillennialism. Amillennialism. Now amillennialism, these people, uh, I'm not saying all of them do, but Amillennialists, they deny a literal 1,000 year reign and they think that currently right now, despite it being 2,000 years already, they spiritualize the numbers of 1,000 and the millennial reign of Jesus. Over there, that's what the, the Amillennialists actually teach actually. Amillennialists, they actually teach that it's spiritualized in the kingdom. Now, in that sense, it's actually true that we are in a spiritual kingdom, but they're ignoring two kingdoms over here. Two kingdoms. We believe in two kingdoms. There is a literal 1,000 year reign millennial kingdom, a physical kingdom, which is called kingdom of God. I mean, kingdom of heaven, excuse me. Kingdom of heaven, yeah, excuse me. And then there's a spiritual one called kingdom of God. Now, I'm not gonna go through all the verses for time's sake, but basically, the spirit, uh, watch our video, Kingdom of Heaven versus Kingdom of God. Watch those videos and you'll see that there's a difference with the two kingdoms over here. So the amillennialists, they're only looking at one kingdom. This is all they're looking at. They're not dispensationalists. Dispensationalists, we believe over here, uh, let me know when I'm out of bounds, all right? So... So, ah, uh, millennial, so, I could be wrong about the spelling here, too. <laughs> it's two L's, right? You know, I think it's two L's, all right? So, ah, uh, millennialism over here, 
They spiritualize the kingdom that currently what we're living in is the millennial reign of Jesus. No, the millennial reign of Jesus Christ is this one over here, and this one is future. This is why we're premillennial. Now, what is premillennialism? If you remember your Revelation study, premillennialism, we teach that basically before the 1,000 year reign, that Jesus will be coming down and rapturing us to heaven. That's what we believe in. Jesus Christ has to come down first to set up the kingdom. So that's what we teach and believe in. Our millennialism, they completely deny that where concerning his coming where he sets up a literal kingdom altogether and they just make it all spiritualized. Now, then what do you do about this resurrection? They assume that this is referring to your born-again state when you're spiritually resurrected. Now, is it true we have a spiritual resurrection, a spiritual born-again process, that we're in the spiritual kingdom of God? Yes, but again, how many kingdoms there are? Two. Two, it's not just one. We also believe in a literal kingdom. Now, even our millennials will have to believe in that. You know why they have to believe in a literal kingdom too? Because where are they going to go after they die? They have to go to a literal kingdom, so, which is Jesus Christ up in heaven. Now, let's go to the book of uh, Timothy. Go to 2 Timothy. Look at the book of 2 Timothy. We're actually going to look at 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 1, excuse me. We're going to look at 1 Timothy chapter 1. Now, notice over here that uh, the Apostle Paul, he turned over these group of people over to the devil, actually, because they were teaching something false for some of you who may not be so aware. We're going to look at the book of 1 Timothy and then chapter 1. Notice over here, verse 20, verse 20. Uh, we'll start with verse 19. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have what? Delivered to Satan that what? That they may uh, learn not to blaspheme. You might say, why is that, Pastor? The reason why is because uh, they taught about the resurrection being passed already. So if you look up these guys later on throughout the Apostle, uh, the Apostle Paul's writings, he's warning the church about these men that the resurrection being passed already is heresy. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Who would teach that heresy? Yeah, come on. Paul said, deliver to Satan. Yeah. Yeah. So when John Piper had his little meeting with the premillennial, amillennial, postmillennial, saying these are good Christian brothers who love the Lord Jesus, they may love the Lord Jesus, but Paul says that they're delivered to Satan. Now, before people get mad at me online and think that I'm unloving and I'm so mean and divisive of pastors, you should look at the Bible. Right. A lot of people who accuse don't look at the Bible first. They just look at the attitude of the preacher, not the Word of God. And are some of you doing that? Now, look, what you got... Yeah, amen, preacher. All right, go to Revelation 20. <laughs> go to Revelation 20. All right. We're going to go to Revelation chapter 20 and then verse 7 and 8. We're going to read through that briefly because I explained to you last time. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. So remember, Satan gets free out of his prison when the millennial reign is over. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. All right, Satan is going around the world. Four corners of the earth is a metaphor like all around the world. He's going to deceive the nations. Why? Uh, mainly Gog and Magog. Remember who they are? That's Russia, and that's the Muslim nations, and that's all of their allies. So it can accuse co communist Muslim nations. Now, there are some people who says that's not true, Pastor, because after the millennial reign, there is no communism, there is no Islam. Okay, I understand that, but uh, here's something they don't understand, is that during the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, they've got to understand this, is that there's going to be people who will be underground and rebel against God. Right. During that 1,000 years, not everyone is perfect. Yeah. Right. 
they're going to have their own little coup underground. And then they're going to have their own probably Russian hackers or etc. And they're going to have their little private meetings and then they're going to do a rebellion against the Lord. And not only that, their ancestry, uh, their generations will be continuing onward from them. 